Okay, so it's like 2.30, um, but I've been awake for a while, and I, I don't know, this is weird. I'm like this, it, sometimes things are so weird, like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, things happen, but then it's like, did that really happen? Did I dream that? Was that real? <laughs> like, it's weird, but, um. Anyways, there's a bunch of random things. So I was laying there. I was trying to go back to sleep, but my brain was just filling up and filling up and I was getting more and more awake. So I was like, okay, but I feel like it's all really scattered. So I don't know. We'll see how it all fits together. Um, when I got up, I was checking my emails and stuff and Amy had emailed me. And um, so that was like, oh, I'm going to start with that because I was tripping out over this last night. It was wild. And I had done a video about it. And I had talked about it a few weeks ago when I said I was on that, um, I caught that woman's live and there was only like 10 of us on there. Um, but she, uh, was showing the sky and she was showing it live. And so it's like, I can't go back and find the video. I don't even know who she is. And, um, her son had told her, you should go live and show this so people can see. And so that's how I caught it. It just came across my feed. And, um, you could clearly, I've talked about it. You could clearly see these spheres up in the sky where it was these circles. It wasn't just the sun dog behind the sun. There was literal spheres. And I was like, whoa, that is wild. That must be what they're trying to cover. And I had, when I was driving all the time, when I would drive into town and whatnot, I would, uh, I've caught some really cool shit up there where, it was um, like the sun and then behind it, the, I'm just going to say Maru because I don't know. I mean, some people call it a sun dog. It's like, I think it's something bigger than a sun dog. <laughs> uh, but I think it's, I think that we have, a, you know, because if you think about like if we're in an ocean and we're in a bubble in the ocean and there would be things going around because I just don't think people really understand like what realms and stuff like that we're in realms and there's this lady that I've come across on TikTok and she is constantly, she, she's real, she's real pumped, man. She's pumped about this. And I think that she's getting videos of the sky and then she's doing some kind of, and, and she, there's things up there that she's seeing or something. So she's using a uh, different color like in the editing to try and pull th certain things forward so you can see them and she can see angels and dragons and stuff. I see a lot of things moving around and doing stuff. And to me, you know, like I had said before, like even there's things that are alive in our realm that still only see like that. They don't see that we, they don't see us as defined. Uh, there's beings that just see color, they see energy, like all sorts of things, like why dogs can see things we can't see and stuff. Cause we all are see different way, we, we pick up on different things that we see, how we see, how we perceive, how we understand. And so in this um, realm thing where she is showing, okay, this is like oh, so many different things coming in my head. Okay, so in the realm thing, um, it, it, okay, so this morning, I just out they were showing me was uh, like if you took a book and then on one page, like you took the first page and that page was its own reality, then you turn the page, and the next page is its own reality separate from the first one, even if there's a story that runs consistently, that page has its own, its own life, its own reality, its own way. And then the next page, the next page, the next page, every page has its own distinct reality. But then when you close them all up and then they make a book. And so that's how all the realities are so close together. Like how I had said before when I was in the hospital, how they had showed me like a deck of cards and how they would go, <clears throat> like when you shuffle them, how they go in between like that. And um, and then when I was talking to that medium and I was the one that I had to come to talk to my dad and stuff, that um, 
I was talking to her about that and she said she was shown the same thing. Sometimes you're shown things that you don't like. Like I said, you can understand what they're saying, but it is like, you can just understand it. Like, okay, I get it. Like everything is just like, just like when I had that other experience where I left my body and I went into, it was like a tornado kind of, of energy. And I was like, I was in a portal and in the portal, it was just the same thing, like stacks of realities, all as close together as like the lines of a record. They even are, I think, kind of linked together like that. But see the separation between the songs, how there's a bigger space. There is where you would need a portal to move in between. And so we have, um, it, like we are just a page in a book. Our reality is just one page. We're surrounded by all these other pages, but we have no awareness of the other pages. So the other pages have no meaning or effect in our lives. For some of us, though, we had awareness of a, the other pages. So they did have an effect on our lives because of our awareness. You know, we would move into a house and things would start happening. We would become aware that there was a spirit of some sort trying to communicate or living its life, whatever, that there was other things happening. Whereas someone else can move into that house, have no awareness of the other realms and just think, um, you know, oh, I must have dropped that or something. They just, they always are making excuses for things. Even when things don't make any sense, they they need to go to what makes sense. They've got, always got to jump into try and make it make physical sense in this world because they're so trapped in their mind. And uh, see, it's like a mind trap. I'm telling you, this is like we're trying to escape a mind trap. <laughs> totally. And, and it's all programming. Everything. You are totally programmed. Everything you do until you become aware of your programs and start breaking your programs, you're programmed. It's just the way it is. And so, um, <clears throat> so the, um, and when that, when I went up in that tornado kind of thing and I saw all the realities, I totally had the awareness that I could come out in any reality. Like everything is available to you. And so, um, and then where I was taken though was out. And it was just like open space. It was just like blank. And then, um, but I could see something way up ahead. And then, at, and then I could feel it. I could hear it. I could feel it. I totally understand what it is like <clears throat> for like the watchers or the universe and stuff. Like I could totally get what I was being shown. And then I could totally see as I got closer, it was like a ride. Like this experience is like a ride and it's like cycles and it's just this, uh, and, but it, the reverberation goes out, our, our feelings and everything goes out. That's why we're contained because that, that energy goes out and explodes into the universe and affects all things. So there's containments for certain types of, uh, frequency. Like you have to have a higher frequency. You can't, and this holds so much pain and suffering. And so it's contained in order to not have that spread. If you see what I'm saying. Although, um, I don't, I, you know, it, it, I like, it always is shown like the never ending story. That's what I'm always, when I like question certain things or certain movies and stuff that always come into my head and it'll always be out of the blue too. It's not like I'm sitting there thinking about that movie and thinking about that movie and then all of a sudden, no, it's like it, they'll use your own reference. Whatever you have as reference in your own mind, that's why I say you got to always increase your reference because they'll use your reference to help you understand things. And you can only understand up to your understanding. So if you have limited reference, you're not going to understand things as deep as what they may be trying to explain to you. So the, um, okay. So I was like, okay, I knew I was going to go off on a whole bunch of different things. Okay. So uh, let me go back to, okay. So, uh, the realms and everything is right next to us. And it's so close. And the more awareness you have, of the realms, the more it opens up what's real. So, you know, like to me, 
Like I always knew Bigfoot, Giants, Fairy, I always knew that stuff was real. I always knew it was around us and it's just on a different frequency, but I knew it was there. And um, it's just wild because there's people who literally think that Bigfoot is just like a bear or something, like another creature is outsmarting people and that that is like, because we're flesh and blood, it's flesh and blood. Like people don't understand, you know, we have beings that can just move through dimensional realities. They don't, they aren't as limited as like how we are. And when you understand about spirituality, you understand that in order to move through the, the different levels you have, it's based on frequency. And so, yeah, a lot of them can come in here because it's so low frequency, <laughs> low vibration, the free for all. So, um, okay, let me, okay, this is like so many things. Okay, so let me go back to the, um, the spheres in the sky. So, uh, in, and then when I had been out driving and when I get out of like the forest and the mountain part, you know, where it's all curvy and I get to where it's open, then I have seen like the sun with the number behind it. And then you can tell something's behind the sun because there's light coming out the sides behind the, the thing. So you have this light, then you have this big thing that's dark, and then you have light coming out around it. And to me, my um, concept of what I was seeing was that they've, they're hiding, uh, or this planet, this planet is going across the, our sun, going across the natural sun. So it's not like that they're hiding it, but they're trying to hide what's happening. So the planet is coming through our atmosphere. And that's why in different parts of the states and stuff, it's in different locations. It's like, it's, it's wild when you, when you really start paying attention to this stuff and you see like how it's turned and where it's in the different places. And so the, um, uh, because it's at certain times where the sun is, is where you can see it really good. And so, uh, this morning when I got up, Amy had sent me some footage that she had gotten, uh, last week in Tennessee. And she had, um, she got pictures of the spheres up in the sky. And so it, now it's not just like the sun is hidden by this planet. So they put a fake sun up so that we think that it's, everything's normal. <laughs> everything's normal. Nothing to see here. And then they spray the fuck out of it so that they uh, cloud it over so we can't see what's going on up in the sky. And then when you get these peaks through, it's just wild looking. And yesterday I got a really good peak. I wasn't expecting it either. I really got to start just taking my phone on the walks, but it's still so hard. I mean, like I'm 225 pounds of dog pulling me and, um, you know, I'm trying to maintain that. And so, yeah, trying to be out to getting videos and stuff is like, I tried before just with Stella and she would yank me. It was like really hard. So I don't ever take my phone when I take them for a walk. And there's so many times when I was like, dang, I wish I had my phone. And yesterday was one of them. So this is like, I just feel so fortunate that I even got to see this. It was wild. It was wild. And so I first, we walked out of the driveway, you know, and that takes me a minute because I've got to move my barricades for a whole, you know, whippersnapper over there who's just magic. Like this guy, I, I, I keep getting these videos come into me. Uh, yesterday was really fucking cool. It was like uh, in a gym kind of thing. And I don't know if they were training these dogs, but they, the dogs were racing each other and they were doing like a baton race. And, uh, and then they had to go through these jumps. It was so fucking cool. And so it was these, uh, it was uh, two teams and they both were going and the way that they would jump is just like him. He's like a natural. I was like, oh my God, I really got to step up my game. But these like, these are, I don't even know who these trainers would be. This isn't like regular dog training. I don't know. Some of the stuff I saw was like police dog training and all the stuff that I see them doing is like, fuck, he could totally do that. He could totally do that. 
Like the stuff I see this guy do, it's like, this is unnatural. <laughs> like, but then I see these other videos. Like one was a guy who was sharing a video of his dog and his dog goes and climbs the tree, uses the fence and the tree, climbs up, gets to the top of his fence, the little board on the inside, he stands on it and uses one leg to push off the tree to hold himself up there. So he's looking around. I was like, oh my God. I got his doppelganger here. This guy is crazy like that. Uh, he, he's he's wild, and but I think if I uh, used his like if I could tame him, <laughs> he would be like amazing. But boy, he's a, he's a challenge, boy. I'll tell you, he's a motherfucking challenge. Like the universe is like, ha ha. Let's see. You think you're doing good? Let's see. <laughs> so um. Anyways, uh, you know, challenge accepted. And, and then yesterday, man, I was bawling all day long. Oh, my God. I can't even fucking handle these videos. Uh, the the animal stuff. Like, it's killer. So I, there's lines out in front of humane depart humane societies. Lines of people uh, for the Thanksgiving weekend dumping off their dogs. People dumping off old dogs, young puppy dogs. Uh, dog, pregnant dogs. It's, 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 oh my God. And I, you know, I, I, what I was saying, you know, about having such a challenging guy is, um, is supposed to help me to have more mercy, less judgment on what I'm seeing, but oh mother fuck. God, it's so painful. Oh, I have no idea why it, it just, it, it wipes me out seeing these dogs sad eyes and stuff and then I don't know I, to me when I see people being sad it's like yeah but you got to learn how to save yourself but it's like the dogs I don't know dogs are here to teach us so much stuff and it's just oh I don't know it's heartbreaking and like I said I mean people have their grandparents as their dogs and don't even know it it's like it's just, uh, you know, it's just sad. The whole thing's sad. This is a hard, hard time in our history. Very difficult. And so, um, anyways, okay. So let me get back to, okay, so back to the sun thing. So um, Amy had gotten some cool pictures over by Tennessee of this sphere thing. And that she sent me this morning just out of the blue. Well, maybe she had seen that I had talked about it on TikTok because she's on TikTok. So maybe that's why that she had sent it. Um, but it could have just been out of the blue. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe she's just thinking about the sky and she's like, oh, I'm going to show her. Um, but anyways, the so when I left and I walked down the driveway, you know, I'm scurrying around trying to get out. And so I'm, the dogs kind of went that way for a second. And I'm always going that way because... <sighs> my dog, they like to linger in people's yards. They like to sniff around. They like to eat the grass. They like to pee. Sometimes they pull out a poop and it's like, oh God. Because some of these people, even though we're out in the forest, they lose their minds if a dog poop. I mean, you got cats and other animals going around all night long, going to the bathroom in your yard, but somebody walks by and the dog poops and you know, lose your goddamn mind. So, um, uh, I, I don't know. I just have a different attitude about some things. So, anyways, the, um, so when I looked over, I could see a distinct circle with the light coming out the side. And I was like, well, that's weird because the sun's not even over there. The sun's way, like, <clears throat> like this would have been here. And then the trees are all here, but the sun was way over here. So where was this, what was this dark circle and how was there light shooting out the side of it? And so I was like, well, that's weird. That's like one of those spheres, but it was on the side. It wasn't up above me. It was like on the side. And, um, so I was like, well, that's wild. And so I could see the line and stuff. I could see it wasn't as behind the sun and that it was its own separate sphere. And so I was like uh or it's the planet and then the sun the actual sun's back there but the sun that they're moving around is over here now but anyways it was totally wild looking so then we leave and we start walking 
and um, so I keep thinking about it, and I'm, so I'm looking over, and so the dogs are lingering over in this one part, and it means in in front of my neighbor's house that always would talk about with my daughter how weird it was that I'm always looking up at the sky. And so this is all happening right in front of their window. So I don't even know. But it, to me, it's like, I, you know, all these neighbors are going to, uh, they'll see. They'll see. So anyways, I was out there, um, you know, I'm always looking up at the sky and stuff. And then, I, you know, I know I'm being watched all the time. And so people I know see me go get my phone and video some of this stuff. But, um, so this, the dogs are real eager. They're busy. And so I was like, I, I, I even said, you guys stop or I'm going to go home right now. Cause I want to go get my phone anyways. And they were all into their things. So I just got into the here and now. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to get footage of this. Even if I got footage of it, it would not give it justice of what I'm seeing. So I just need to enjoy this opportunity and see what I'm seeing. And it was so fucking trippy. So I, I come out the driveway and I kind of go around the turn and there's a bunch of big tall trees. But so as I go around the turn, because I'm right on the a turn on the street and as I go around the turn, I don't know, I, I saw another rainbow that was turned the wrong direction sticking out. And I was like, whoa, another, cause this is a rainbow around wherever these lights come out it creates like this rainbow you can see the color spectrum and that's another thing that makes it really stand out is it's not just light poking out there's a rainbow there's like a silhouette of a rainbow and not a silhouette would it be a silhouette no it would be a it, it's like a, a circle going around it but it's a rainbow and and then you have light that shoots out too but it's like you can see this color spectrum and it's turned the wrong way it's not like a normal rainbow and you know it's not anything like a normal rainbow but it's a rainbow and so when I come around the corner and I look up I could see another rainbow and it was turned the wrong way too and so this one was above me and it was turned going you know inward like not going out and down it was turned going inward like a circle above me a rainbow circle and so I was looking at it <laughs> so funny because so I was looking at it. it was reminding me of a scene out of a movie with John Cusack and uh and it had nothing to do with that but it was my reaction and I felt like I was his character all of a sudden it was weird that was really weird too and that was so weird and so I was looking at it and then I could see like it wasn't just a circle with a rainbow around it with a different color inside. No, this one was going up. It was literally going up. Just like how I had seen in the experience that I had where I went into the tornado thing. It looked like that. Only it was, so it was like a sphere. Okay, so like a circle above you. There was a rainbow. Only when you looked into it, it went up. It went to a totally different, it was totally separate. And it went up and it had all these swirls going around in it. And I was standing out there, I swear, I still feel like I'm John Cusack looking at it. And as I was looking and um, it was, and I have no idea why, it, it was some movie I saw where, the, where he was like this laugh and this, you know, I, this laugh and like, I'm experiencing this all by myself. No one's here. I'm doing this all by myself and just enjoying it. And so I kept having that kind of feeling that it was that I've seen it in this movie. And I, I don't know even why that went into the relation in my brain. And so um, I'm just like totally tripping out of like, and, and so I keep looking at it and I keep just looking around like, what the hell, this is crazy. Like, this is literally opening up a fucking portal right above us. Like, we're, I'm telling the dogs, we're about to go up in a portal. We're about to be sucked up in a portal. Like, there's literal portals opening up above us. And, um, you know, and I, I think anybody who hears me out in the streets anyways thinks I'm a wackadoo. Because I'm always talking to my dogs like they talk back. But I can hear them. <laughs> they, they do communicate. And um, you just got to tune into that realm. Tune into their communication. And you will start to see that there's communication. There's not mindless stuff going on here. 
And so then, um, so I get to see it and it was really fucking cool. And then, uh, I saw, I definitely saw a spray happening because I thought that looks so weird because it, it, it was weird looking the colors. It was weird. And, uh, it, it looked so strange. And so it was like this weird line going through this other color of the sky thing. It was outside of the portal thing. And, but this, the sky looked so weird. And you could tell it was so heavily sprayed. It was so foggy and stuff. It's like they know. I don't know if they watch the movement of this shit and they just follow around trying to spray so that we don't see what's going on in the sky or something. It's wild. But so they were spraying right then. And so we walked a little further, but still just turned around real quick. But then it was still, she lingered a lot to get back to the house. Because she, sometimes she needs to stop and smell something for like 10 minutes. It's like, what are you smelling? And it's really not like 10 minutes, but it feels like it. And it's like uh, yesterday, she's sitting there smelling, smelling. And I got this uh, image of that she's like, logging in smells into like a, this computer into her mind and she's it, it, there's the whole thing going so anyways I try and have respect for what she's doing but it can irritate the shit out of me especially if I have other things I want to do it makes it at this point I wanted to hurry back and get to my phone before the thing was gone and um so I ran in I got them back in the yard I ran in got my phone um and I, at first I thought well I'll just say something um, you know, like how wild you got to get out and look at the sky. But then I thought, well, I'll try and run out and get it anyways. So I grabbed the phone and I ran out there. So I did like a, I don't know, 10 second video thing. But then I just had that as the start. So I had the same video going and I went outside to show them. And you could see the one on the side a little bit. I think that's a little harder for him to spray when it's on the side or something. But they were still, I mean, they were actively spraying as fast as they could. And um, so then I walked over to go around the corner. I could not find that one anywhere. It was like it just had disappeared. Like they just sprayed right over it. And the um, and then there was some weird things with the spraying too. Because there was several of them going. And, and there's one, it started over, way over by the mountain. So I could see the line coming up from the mountain. Then the atmosphere or the color of the sky changed and it became super dark on this one part. And through that dark part, you would think that would be the part you would see the light the most of this spray, but it wasn't. You couldn't see it at all. There was nothing. It was like a blank it was like it totally went blank. And then when the sky got lighter, then the line came back. And then it went long, long ways. So they were definitely trying to cover it. But I was like, this is a portal. And then um, this isn't just a sphere. This isn't just like there's there's way more going on up in the sky than they want us to know. It's like I thought what, what it was it giving me the image of it was um, the uh, like Swiss cheese. Like our atmosphere is becoming like Swiss cheese. Like the firmament is popping holes in it. And that it is, um, I don't know, it's changing. Our, our freak, Us changing our frequency is popping holes in the firmament, which is creating portals. And it is, um, and then they're trying to cover them. They don't want us to see these portals. And, you know, I, I mean, these are huge. These aren't just like walking in the forest and all of a sudden you go through one and you find yourself in some other space and time. These are huge. Like this was giant, this this one. And it went so deep. I was like, oh, I thought that this must be it. This must be when the, the sky's going to open. Like I can't imagine people being out there, religious people seeing that, not expect Jesus is about to drop down through this portal. Because <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's wild looking. And, and and they definitely don't want us to see, uh, uh, um, but that is you know when 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 it's not just like Swiss cheese and everything is open, it's going to be so much more wilder looking 
than what people understand. When when the realms open up and you can see more realms, just like this lady who keeps sharing this footage, and she can see dragons and all sorts of shit flying around. And so, and there's all these people who could like sit and talk to the dragons and stuff. Oh, and this was something I wanted to share. And I'm gonna see if I can share this video because it was also, it was like a part 11 that I caught on to. And this is some guy, I don't know who it is, it's like a lecture, like this guy's up doing a lecture and this is 1996. And the question was something about the shift. And so he starts talking and explaining stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds just like me. This is same information. I've never heard this guy, never heard him or anything. And he's saying the same shit as I'm saying. Like that to me is when I, when I hear that kind of stuff, that is when I'm like, okay, this guy, he's tuned into the universe. He can hear, he, he gets what's going on because that's always my barometer is because I know what they tell me. I know what, you know, so, um, so anyways, it wasn't just confirmation or anything. It was definitely, but it was like confirmation, but it was like more than that. And, um, so I do want to share it and there's a bunch more parts and I don't know in all the parts, I don't know every single thing he said, but something that he said that I have talked about before that I thought this is interesting because I hadn't heard this before. And he said that, so these people who try and channel, uh, like these people who say they're talking to angels and he said like, uh, Archangel Michael and Gabriel and all these people. I think that there's even, uh, I mean, there's a channeler who talks to Chiron. Uh, I think that's the guy's name. I don't know who Bashar talks to. Maybe Bashar, maybe the guy's name is something else and Bashar is who he talks to. I'm not sure. I just, I see this guy all the time, uh, pop up all the time. People are, share his stuff. Um, but I don't know for sure who he talks to and I don't listen to all the stuff he says and Abraham Hicks too I like um, there's things like there's a lot of these people I don't listen to that a lot of people listen to but I never listen to them just like that um, Eckhart Tolle Tolle who wrote that I think that's his name who wrote that but I've never read that book so there's a lot of that stuff I I don't know these people's teachings so um so anyways but uh, um you know i just know my own <clears throat> from my own guides my what i'm told what i've been told how i've gone through my life so that's what i share about and um and so i like you know when i hear these confirmations and stuff and so um anyway so this guy was saying to you people because remember david wilcock now he's uh, you know he's channeling archangel michael you know, and I know what I, I'm always saying is like, I don't get all this name dropping. Like I've been talking to these people my whole life, ever since I was, you know, tiny, I was a toddler and, um, I've been talking to these people and it's never been about their name or who they are. And I don't know if it's just because I was so young and maybe these people, as they get older, when they start talking to somebody, they want to know who they're talking to, but an energy can trick you. A name doesn't matter. It's the energy. You got to pay attention to the energy, not the name. Like, uh, so, and you notice the energies when you tune into them. You can pick up, you can tell different energies. Mm -hmm. You can tell when a family member's by you. You can tell, like, they're all different. And so, it's the energy that you want to pick up on, not a goddamn name. It's the same thing with the people who, uh, you know, get catfished by going on damn dating websites anybody can say anything and just call themselves whatever you got to be basing things on the the person the interaction what you what do you pick up on what does your soul tell you and so um anyways this guy so what he was saying that these people who say that they are channeling these archangels and stuff he said y'all don't seem to know who these people are but he said that uh Michael, I think he said it's, it's really called Michael, and it is a, uh, it's not the Galactic Federation, it is a group, it is, um, what did he call it? 
I was thinking of it this morning while I was laying there. Um, because it's the same thing with Gabriel, only he said it to, like it's Ga Gabriel or something like that. But they are uh, kind of essentially like these um, police, like they're here to police us. And like uh, Ga Gabriel or something had like a certain, like the Northern Hemisphere is their area that they're supposed to watch over. And so the people who are communicating with these people are communicating with people who are there to control, control this realm, control us. It isn't, uh, you know, you're not out there just free will in it or something. You're being controlled. They're sending certain information and it's not even where you're talking to just like this archangel, this magnificent being who is uh, sits at the right hand of God. It's like all that kind of stuff is so wild to me, especially when you see these people who try to market themselves as super spiritual and stuff. And then they keep on bringing up about God and stuff. There's not an almighty over you. It's all of us together come together is what is the creation of the God, the universe. It's all of our energy. We are the fractals of that. And that is the point of us coming together is for unity and harmony is because otherwise your body is in a misalignment. It is in a state of disease. So anyways, the, um, so they are, um, like a, like a police, police force kind of thing. Like, uh, but they're galactic, but they are of a certain energy to, uh, control and contain us and so I don't know I just thought that was wild because I I had already thought about I didn't understand all the name dropping and stuff with the channeling in that people try and give themselves a relevance by dropping names and stuff oh well you know I'm I've got you know Archangel Michael right here and he's telling me it's like well this guy is saying and this is in 1996 and he was saying that, uh, and it's in the CIA files apparently, is that uh, you aren't talking to some holy archangel up in the sky and all that bullshit. That you were talking to, it is like an energetic, uh, oh, man, I keep on, I, I can see it, but I can't think of the words I want to use. Uh, because it's like a, a, a force, like a police force. It's, it's like if these people are communicating with like a squad car <clears throat> that is meant to patrol your neighborhood. So these are like patrolling energies that patrol and keep us in line or something. So anyways, but to me, you know, we're breaking free from an entire system of control. And only the souls that are ready to break free can break free. You can't be dependent and call yourself broke free. If you're dependent in any way on this system, then you are, uh, you know, it's a dependency. It's not, <clears throat> you got to question everything that you feel dependent on in the system. You got to question it. Like, why do I think that? Why do I feel like I need that? Why do I feel like I need this? You know, and start getting down to what do you need? As a sovereign being, as a sovereign soul, as a spirit, what do you need? And um, so it's 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 like a to me it's like a development stage. It's like you are developing yourself, and this is an opportunity. It's not to say that you're underdeveloped because when you leave this thing, you're way higher vibration than what this place is. But it is a development out of this uh, out of this vibration. It's like a new, a different pathway. We're creating a pathway, uh, and every pathway is like, like when I got my brain injury, that was a thing. It's like I had to create new pathways in my mind. The ones that had gotten, it's like they go in and blow up my brain and take away all the bridges, all the paths, and everything. And then it's kind of this empty thing of like pockets of stuff <clears throat> and I had to create pathways to find to get to information again so I had to go in and recreate pathways that were already established through my childhood and through my life but all those were wiped out so I had to create new ones and then it's hard 
and a lot of people give up. A lot of people who get brain injuries give up. A lot of people who get brain injuries, it's a really high suicidal rate. And, um, you know, it's difficult. And one thing that's difficult is how people see you is very different after you have it. People don't see you the same. And everything destabilizes in your life, like time. And when I, when I think of it, when I'm shown it, it is like, you know, I'm doing this one thing, but the clock's just going wild and I'm looking at the clock and it's like, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not in sync anymore. And so you, you find yourself out of sync with reality and you have to find your place again. And, um, you know, it takes a lot. Every person who ends up getting a disability of some sort or some, you know, ma major tragic thing that happens in their life, they have to re, you know, reclaim their space. You know, they have to go in and, uh, you know, fix and heal the things that got broken. You know, that's, um, but this is what this place is all about. It gives you these opportunities. And so many people don't use their opportunities. And then, you know, you pass out of here and you leave and you transition out. And then you find yourself like, oh my God, I just, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't do this. And you have a plan when you come in. You plan on doing a lot of things, but there's a lot of disruptions. But it's not that the disruptions don't come out of nowhere. The disruptions were always going to come. And you will always see your own behavior in the disruptions. Because that's what you are looking at. That's what you're trying to... Um, resolve is your own reactions, your own behaviors. You're trying to understand yourself. That's what a soul is always trying to do is understand itself and is learning and growing as it does so. And so, um, let me think because, uh, there's, um, there's this other, okay. Yeah. Cause there's this other, um, this spiritual teacher. I know she's a life coach and I know she charges a lot. She's definitely one of the, I liked her. I mean, when I've talked to her a few times, just like in comments and stuff, and she always seemed, you know, nice and stuff. I'm not saying every single life coach out there is a total piece of shit or something. Um, but there is, um, there's, this is, this is, um, Okay, so as a spiritual person, if you are truly living by, you know, your spirit, it's a different, it's a different timeline. Let's just call it that. It's a different, it's a different way of approaching life. And so on the approach, when you're putting something out, say, you know, I'm, I'm channeling and they're giving me information and they're giving it to me for free, but then I'm going to turn around and charge somebody. So that is a problem. That's not, that's not in sync. That's not in harmony. That is not doing in the flow of what the universe is doing. The universe isn't charging me for information. They're not making me pay for it. So why would I turn around and say, hey, I'm special. I got this information, but you want my information. You're going to pay me for it. That isn't how the universe works. The universe is more... You, um, you share their information. So they give you information, you share their information, and then the universe gives back to you. So the universe gives back what you need. So you always are taken care of. And if you have desires beyond that, those are your own desires that you have to understand for yourself. And you always are putting out, you know, what you love and stuff. But if it's when your desires become obstacles. I mean, you can't enjoy life because you're so busy in a desire. I, I want this. I'll be happy when I have this. And this is something that I personally, I feel like, battle myself anyways. Because I know what's to come. I know, you know, I have this, you know, great love ahead of me and stuff. And there's a lot of times, you know, where I'm like... I want to just jump up to that part. I want to just get in there to that part. So, uh, you know, I completely get what they're saying about when you get into the focus of your desires and you stop being in the here and now because you're so focused. Oh, things will be good when I get there. Oh, that's going to be so much better when I get there. So you lose your time and space of the present moment. And so it's always important to pull yourself back into the present moment. And so you got to have awareness of your own 
obstacles, your own created obstacles. Like I have to be aware of my own obscene. Like, yeah, I, you know, I want to jump forward and, you know, be in this person's arms and be out there experiencing the world and, you know, sharing our knowledge and stuff, you know. Um, but I, you know, as a soul, I understand that they have to go through whatever it is that they have to go through to get to where I'm at. You know, we have to still meet on the dock. There's a point where our, you know, there's something will align and I don't know what it is. It's very hard to, to experience this, but there's a point to it. There's a point, there's always things being brought up to me of things that I need to learn and grow and accept just like this. Just like, you know, you can't get focused on your desires and leave the here and now. The here and now is your your moment in time, your moment of experience. And when you're trying, trying to jump ahead all the time, then you are out of your here and now, you're out of your experience. And you're also showing dissatisfaction to the universe, like I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied, and I think this is kind of like what, um, you know, when Abraham Hicks is talking about manifesting and stuff, that she is, says, she'll say things, but she says them different a little, but sometimes it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's like translation and stuff, so anyways, but the way I see it is that you are sending out dissatisfaction. You're jumping ahead like, well, you need to do this. You need to do that. And there is a time and space. You're on a ride. They are not going to jump you from this ride to that ride. You can't leave that car and jump in this car. They, uh, You're on a ride. You have a plan, a pre-plan, a destiny. And so, and the more that you get into sync with your destiny then the more that you're in your here now moment rather than trying to be dissatisfied and living for something that hasn't come yet and so now i have it in my head her saying something uh, about you have to know it and believe it in order to have it and that is that is something too is like because i think <clears throat> i think whatever is going on in my life right now that people are going to see it as i manifested this you manifested all this it's like you know this is going to be my opportunity to be able to explain to people it's not you're not manifesting like that you are listening to the universe they are taking you on a ride and you are uh, you can fight it or you can go with it. And so the ride is, you know, it's your destiny. And so if you're fighting it, you know, I'm not worthy. I can't do that. And you go against it. But that's where your lessons are. You know, I could have been like, like just how I was in 2019 when I started trying to do this. No, it was 2018, I think. 2018, because I actually made some videos. And then I just was like, oh, I couldn't stand them. <laughs> I was like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And um, I even was going to have my granddaughter edit them. I was like, you know, do you know how to edit? Do you, could you do that if I start doing these videos? And, um, you know, she said, sure. And I think I sent her some. But it, anyways, the timing was off. It wasn't right. I was not comfortable or anything. And, you know, I could have continued that. You know, you can continue not following through for as long as you continue to not follow through that is where you're not in sync so whereas like you aren't you're you're not becoming your manifestation but you have to become your you know your manifestation you have to become that you have to walk into it but to me it was shown to me i didn't just sit back and go like hmm what do I want to manifest today? I think I'm going to manifest. I'm going to fall in love with that guy. And then we're going to go over here. You know, I'm not sitting there doing that. <laughs> it was like, they start bringing me things. They start showing me things and giving me information. And, you know, that kind of thing starts coming. And so then you can be like, okay, well, no, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. No, that's crazy. No, that wouldn't happen. That's where you were not going into your manifestation. You got to go into it. They're showing you. You go into it. You were like, okay, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but let's let's go. Let's do this. 
And so I you know, started doing this and stuff, which I didn't even know. Like to me, I've said before, even when I started doing this, I thought, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. This person's gonna think I'm such a fucking weirdo. And um, so anyways, it was, um, you know, I, but I had to go with what I felt was right for me. I had to go with what they were telling me to do. Even if to me in my 3D mind of my understanding, it didn't make any sense. I was like, this is wacky. And I even went and I even talked to some other adults, you know, because I, I felt like I was being so strange. I was like telling people, well, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And, um, and nobody, you know, freaked out. Nobody was like, oh my gosh, you're so weird. Why would you do that? <laughs> like I needed, I needed other people to give me confirmation that I wasn't totally weird or something. But, you know, I've moved on from that. But at that time, you know, this is in 2020 when everything was just going wild and I had so much to say and my guys just would have me up all night talking and stuff. And it was like, okay, we got to do this. So, um, anyways, that is, to me, it, that's why to me, the teachings of manifesting is kind of different than my understanding of manifesting. Manifesting is keeping yourself on track of what they are saying is trusting and following through. It's like a trust to fall into the universe is your manifestation is following what they tell you to do to get you where you're going. And there along the way, you can get into desire and expectation. And that is where you have another, I'm sure all sorts of emotions. Everybody's got all sorts of emotions, rejection, uh, all sorts of things come up. And so you have to process through those, you, you process through what comes up. You don't ignore it. You don't think, oh, well, I'm on the wrong track. No, you understand these things are happening as a preparation. They're helping me purge out and get myself to a more clean understanding. And so they work with you to get you to your manifestation. But a lot of people don't understand how it works. And, and it's going to make so much more sense once everything flips. And then the manifestations start revealing themselves. And so then it will be a lot easier to explain, I think. Because <clears throat> like so many things I talk about, it's like hard to understand unless you can see it. So anyways, on um, that whole thing. So, uh, but to me, it is, you know, keeping yourself in the here and now, in your experience, in all the other things that want to pull you to, to process, process through them. But it's definitely important to me and my understanding is to trust the universe. The universe will bring me what I need. It's not like, I mean, there was the period of time where I was a workaholic and I was out working, working, working. I'm gonna get the money, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get that, you know, and doing all of that. And <clears throat> they took it all away. They took it, you know, it was just like a clean job. And it was, um, you know, it, it pushes you out of your comfort zone. It pushes you down. Like I was being destabilized for years. I was losing everything. Everything was falling apart. And it went on for years. Like where these people think they go into a crisis. They've been in a crisis for a couple of weeks. And they, you know, they don't know what to do. It's like, dude, I was in a crisis for years. So you have to just, one thing is, is you, 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 like I said before, don't take on the whole thing. Just take on that day. That day is the only day you got to get through. The next day is not a day you need to worry about. Just today is all you got to get through. And that is where people got to get their focus in the here and now and what you got to do. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You may not wake up in the morning. This may be your last day on this planet. And, you know, you're going to be worrying about what you're going to do tomorrow. So that's where there's so many lessons. There's so many lessons. And the lessons don't stop. You go to the other side. You are going to go for a review so you can understand your lessons. And this is what is kind of trippy to me. Because so this girl who was this life coach and, you know, she charges big bucks. A lot of these life coaches, it's wild. It's so wild to me. That to me right off the bat was like, okay, this is, uh, this isn't spirit. Like there were so many red flags to me on all these people that think of themselves as the highly chosen spiritual 
uh, you know, are nots or whatever they are, the superior beings and the, um, uh, the love and light, like the love and light, I, I guess so ridiculous. Like they're holding people back so much by telling them that they can't, you need to stay high vibration. You can't think of anything negative. They're, they're driving people insane. They're literally making people go crazy. And you, that's the problem I think of what we've got going with our youth too, is because I think our youth understand things on a deeper level, but we keep trying to make it into a superficial world, which just causes chaos inside of them. But they're here to trans, um, you know, to transfer the energy too. They're, they're like bringing the energy up from behind. And so the, so they have a great purpose. Like there's a big reason why this generation of uh, youth is so destabilized in this environment. It's because this environment is toxic as fuck. And the people who've created it now need to see it. They need to recognize that we've created this world. We've made it into what it is. And that there's people here to tell us it's not the way it should be. <clears throat> and, but, the, you know, that the power, because the dark has so much power, it is, makes the people of the light feel so beat down. And so they're bringing in light, you know, they're bringing in common sense, they're bringing in a new wave of energy. But there's also a lot of interference that is coming in, a lot of dark energy. So there's a lot of dark energy around us all the time. And a lot of, it, it makes them kind of susceptible to dark energy through dissatisfaction, through uh, confusion. Dark energy has a portal into your mind, into your soul. So that is why I say like weak-minded and stuff. It's important to keep your wits about you. The other day too, I, I was like, oh my gosh, some voice came into my head and said something. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is where I think people can start feeling like, oh my God, I've got no control over my mind. And it is, um, so there's things that happen out there, you know, to destabilize you, to make you feel crazy and stuff. You got to keep pulling yourself into sanity. I mean, if I went with all of the things, you know, I mean, it would be attention deficit. I'm sure I know that they would say I'm on the spectrum that I am neurodivergent, I'm schizophrenic for sure. Uh, you know, all these things that they would keep me trapped. They would keep me on medicine. They would keep me trapped in that, uh, them trying to control my reality. And, you know, we got to have people out here like me who are saying, hey, reality is not what they're telling you. <laughs> they want to medicate us and tell us that this is, uh, they, they're creating new reality. But anyway, so you have this super spirits and whatnot who have access to the all-knowing knowledge of the universe, but they, they want to uh, charge you. And then some are talking to these, uh, I don't know, the these patrol, these patrol vehicles, these patrol vessels, these patrol, because it's, it's, it's not a collective per se. It was uh, more of a, like a ship, like how he explains it. I'll share the video. I, in my videos, like a couple of, I don't know, I've lost track of time, probably a couple months ago at this point. In my bio thing, on my description, on the videos, they won't let me, I can type something in, but they won't let me cut and paste anything. And I've tried to share so many things, um, but they won't let me cut and paste. So I'll put it in the comments. That's where I usually, if I'm trying to share something, I'll put it in the comments. But that's why I don't have any descriptions anymore. They won't let me put it in there. I don't know what the hell, you know, that they do with my accounts all the time. But anyways, so the, if you want to read the descriptions or have any of the links of stuff that I've shared, you have to go to older videos. And then there's a description and there's also a bunch of videos and stuff I've shared. But on these ones, I'm going to try and share this guy uh, talking about that. And then um, there was another one too that I was going to share that I'll try and put in there. I can't remember. I'll look. Um, but I'll put a couple in the comments um, of stuff that I was saying. And so this, um, this girl, this one who, she's a life coach and stuff. 
because I've seen a lot of these people who consider themselves to be these super spirits, you know, life coaches. They're always life coaches. And I knew the life coach lifestyle was going to blow up in their faces because it's not what the universe is about. The universe isn't about, go, here, we're going to give you this, and then you go charge everybody so you can get money because that's how you got to get money. No, the universe will give you what you need. <clears throat> however they give it to you um you know like for me they gave me disability so that I had income through all this I didn't ever have to worry about a job I didn't have to go out I'm so thankful fuck man and I can't I can't believe how upset I was when I lost my nursing job I lost my nursing license and how I fought to try and keep it and um because I wanted I tried to go on the disability act but then when they when the nursing license place started threatening me and saying if they find out that I've been working with a brain injury, that they will sue me. And I thought, oh, fuck, they investigate. I'm like, there's some shit. Like, because I knew I had made some mistakes that I had tried to cover up. And, um, you know, I was I was struggling there for a while. Um, and, you know, it was a good thing that I lost my job, that I, you know, I could have ended up killing somebody, for God's sakes. So, but at the time, <clears throat> you know, it was really hard. It was everything I had worked for. It was everything I had been working on. And, uh, you know, I thought I was on the right track. And I had no idea that the universe was going to rip everything out from under me and say, no, this isn't what you're supposed to do. And it's so funny, too, even throughout all of the messages I was getting all the time of what I was going to be doing, you know, it just it never made sense to me. I couldn't understand. I mean, when they're telling you something so far ahead and you have no insight to it at all, it was like, you know, okay, well, I guess we'll see how it plays out. I don't know. You know, like when they kept telling me that I was going to be um, well known for this spiritual knowledge and people were going to be coming to me. And this isn't just one person. Like, I can't even tell you how many times I've been told this. And, um, you know, so I would always be confused. I was always in more of a learner. I didn't ever see myself as a teacher. I saw myself as a learner. So I kept them, I, I would just think, well, that's weird. I wonder what happens in the future where I end up doing that. Like that doesn't, like I couldn't understand it. <clears throat> in, my un, in my understanding throughout, <clears throat> even when I <clears throat> started this, it's like I, I mean, I knew some things like, like this is, you know, if you think about your manifestation, I know what it's going to be successful at because it's, I'm on their journey. I'm on their track. I'm following what I'm told by the universe. I'm following my guidance. <clears throat> God, this throat thing. Ugh. And so, um, so I, I don't ever doubt you know, if I'll be successful or not. But, but I also, you know, I mean, it toys with your mind. It messes with it as things go and your account goes down, goes the opposite way and you see other people's accounts going up. It takes a lot of your trust to go like, okay, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. It only matters what I'm told, what they tell me and what I'm doing, what I'm told. And then just let them handle it however they handle it. And... So, um, and it's just a different approach to life. I'm telling you, it's just a different approach. And so, um, you know, I'm just on that track of where they're explained to me, tell me to go. And so on, um, and I, I am sure, you know, whatever success is, I mean, uh, this is successful to me right now is I'm not having to work through all this. I don't have to sit and worry about what a lot of other people are worrying about. But I do have the challenges now with the house and that nightmare. That, that was haunting me all day yesterday. Like I kept looking out of the gate. I kept expecting to see these people. It was very creepy. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I am going to have to go and learn these ordinances and codes. I may just write a little cheat sheet. So if they do come up, I can start saying about, you know, my human rights and stuff. They can't do shit. And if they do, you know they're in trouble and so uh anyways you know I was, there's there's lots of things like 
um, I haven't finished that girl yet, but this one, um, you know, I saw this video last night right before I went to bed and this lady was talking about the, uh, tectonic plates and she said, scientists are freaking out and they're not telling, you know, people aren't listening and they're, you know, it's not going mainstream, but the, the scientists are freaking out. And so from Vancouver, and so Vancouver's just above me. Um, I'm like an hour away from Vancouver, or an hour and a half or something. Vancouver, Canada. So I'm not talking about Vancouver, Washington. I'm probably six hours from Vancouver, Washington. But from Vancouver, Canada, I'm about an hour and a half. And so, and it's on the, it's on the coast. Like when you go out to some parts of our water, uh, water land that you can look over and you can see Vancouver. So, uh, along that pathway. So from where Vancouver is all the way down, that there is these holes that are making all over in the tectonic plates. And they've been studying them and studying them. There's a whole bunch right now going in front of Newport, Oregon. And they go all the way down to Mexico. So across this whole west coast, like what it shows in the doomsday map and what it is, um, uh, what I've been talking about. So she said that there's a, these holes and there's warm air or something coming up in these holes, which, you know, is weird over here is like right now, there's not been any snow or anything, but the temperature is so absolutely frigid. I, it is so fucking cold. And, and then it will say like it's 49 degrees. It's like, there is no motherfucking way this is 49 degrees. And so I, I you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get I, I've talked about this for years, how the thermometers don't match what the real temperature is. And so, uh, because I even started using an, an old temperature or an old thermometer so I could go out. I should do that again because I have an old one and go out and see what it registers it as outside. Because um, those ones I would think would be more accurate, the ones that have the stuff in it that rises but for them to be telling us on our phones and stuff the temperature they're jacking it around no fucking way and the way that they have it so cold right now and i had seen somebody in southern california i think she lives in the mountains but the other day she said it was 16 degrees there so it's like that they're making the atmosphere super super cold but the ground is super warm under the water and they're always making these clashes that's how they create the storms it's the clash between the, the light and the dark, the hot, the cold, it, you know, it's all this clash. So it's like they're trying to create this clash for one thing, I think. And so all along the tectonic plates, that there's these holes busting through, there's warm air coming through and the holes keep busting through. And it's showing that the tectonic plates are moving and shifting and they're expecting a really big earthquake to go from Vancouver all the way down to Mexico that they're saying is gonna be a 9.5 and that it's going to completely wipe out the West Coast. And this is where California falls into the water. And that the um, it's going to create tsunamis that are going to be like 325 meters. I think she said meters tall. I haven't gone in and looked at all these studies. This is some woman who was reading these studies. She was showing it out of a science book and then I was seeing a duet of somebody sharing her stuff. So there's people who are noticing and talking about, I've been talking about this shift happening for a long time. The one girl, she's on Everyday Live, this English girl who is trying to tell people about what's about to happen in America. And, um, and, and that was really like, oh my gosh. So I really got to get it out of my head that you know, that there's any saving my house anyways. Like, can you imagine you're paying all these payments, you're going without food, you're struggling and struggling to pay your house payment, and then it just comes in and it's wiped off the planet and, it, you know, goes underwater because that's what we're headed for. And, I, and then another thing, you know, I've just got to enjoy this place if I have it. I've got to really be like, you know, I'm so lucky I had this experience. I'm so lucky I got this house. It's been so magnificent for me for this uh, period of time and stuff. So the, um, you know, 
<clears throat> but it's very likely that it's going to be gone. And you know what? That has been something I've talked about so many times because I've looked so often on that map. But it definitely looks like my place, especially if it starts in Vancouver and it cuts over. It cuts deep into Washington. It goes along the Cascadia Mountains, it looks like to me, on the Doomsday map. It's the mountains... Uh, the mountain line is what ends up being our new shore. And the mountains, you know, we have other beings and shit living up in the mountains. So I don't know if, you know, we'll just be like, well, you guys stay up there and we'll stay down here. I don't know how it's all going to go. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, uh, there's literal people trying to get in that goddamn giant's door. They're knocking all over the door. They can hear that it's hollow in there. It's like that guy could come out there and eat you all. And still be hungry. Like, you people are just so whacked, man. They're so disrespectful of other beings. It's just like, oh, there's something else. Well, then, you know, us humans, we're going to go out and just, I don't know. It's so, uh, it's like fucking Jack not having any space, uh, like any respect for one's space. It's the same thing. It's like these people. So, anyways, the life coach lady. So, anyways, but with on the tectonic plate and stuff, so scientists are saying that you know that they're expecting this to be going. So, I was back to like, okay, well, like, fuck, is that gonna be like the thing that goes down over here? We're gonna fucking be in this horrendous earthquake. It's gonna wipe out so many people, and it's gonna be a big disaster, and a lot of people are gonna die. And you, you can't die unless you're meant to die. Just remember that. You only leave the game when it's your time to leave the game. Oh yeah. I saw this commercial yesterday and I was like, oh my fucking God. It blew my mind as I was sitting there watching it. And I was like, oh my God, I want this on tape. What the hell? And I, this, I don't even know if I can make it make sense. But so it's a, one of their drugs and they all have like matching names right now. Like they all sound so much alike. But so it's one of their new drugs and so the part in the commercial where I caught it, they're telling you about this drug and then they say, but the truth is that everything is based on your DNA. So you won't have this problem. No, they said everything. Okay. okay so they said everything is based on your DNA then, and they have all these people on the beach and then suddenly certain people light up. And so they start saying, it is all based on your DNA. It doesn't matter about your lifestyle or anything like that. It matters about your DNA. And your DNA is why, you know, you need to take this medicine to make sure so that, you know, because your DNA can make you have high blood pressure or can make you have obesity or can make you have this or that or whatever. But think about that from the flip side. That's the thing is that they're always trying to show this other side. Think of that from the flip side. Your DNA is why you have the things. It is nothing. Their, their medicine can't do shit. It can't help your DNA. And so anything that happens is supposed to happen. That is your experience to learn and grow from. So it isn't the... Um, but they keep everybody thinking, oh, this can happen. This can happen. Oh, I could get high blood pressure. Oh, I could get this. I could get that. No, you can't. You can't get any of these things. It's just like you can't die before your time. There's nothing that can happen to you that's not meant to happen to you. It's in your fucking DNA. And so uh, but I thought, oh, that's really interesting how they said that right in that commercial. But then they did that little twist. So you need to be really on top of this, you know, because it's in your DNA. Okay, think about it. Think about it from the other way. Flip it over. This is like the whole thing with Q. It was always about you know, look deeper, go in deeper, think about it. This is something from this whole thing about the awakening. It's all about the awakening. It's about ask questions. Think of it. Think from the other side, gain perspective, gain information, gain reference. It's all about you gaining and turning yourself on and realizing there's a whole motherfucking library inside of you anyways. You don't need any of their shit. And they want you to just become dissatisfied. It's just blowing my mind. These women in these fucking bold glamour. Yeah, we all look fucking great when we put on the bold glamour filter. But then what do you do when you go look in the mirror? What happens? You, say, you, you, you can't carry gold glamour onto your mirror. 
getting very gold glamour out in the grocery store. The one girl, she even said that she got recognized out at a grocery store the other day and the people were so excited that uh, when they saw her, you know, it was just like, it's just, well, I think a lot of people who've been watching this lady for a long time, they know, you know, her real face and why she's put on this bold glamour and is trying to change her persona or something. It's like, I don't know. People go about things so backward to me. So, I mean, you know, where would our society be headed? Like, we're all supposed to just go into a screen so everybody can look perfect and be perfect and have no problems. You think you stop feeling because you're not paying attention to your feelings? Your body is just decaying. So, um, anyways, so this life coach lady, she, um, was doing a very serious video. She's very confused. And I've seen so many of these super spirits out there. Here goes my stomach growling like crazy. Uh, so many of these super spirits out there who are, um, confused about stuff. Like things are not going the way that they thought. They thought some other things were going to happen and they thought things were going to happen differently and stuff. And I don't even know what they've been saying to people as life coaches. Like, I have no idea, you know, if they just keep telling them, don't think about negative things, forget about your pain, forget about your suffering. You know, it's like, I, I have no idea. But I'm assuming that it's a backward way of going about it. And so anyways, she was very concerned. She wasn't marketing herself as a life coach. She was very concerned and she was looking for people to talk to because she's positive that she died three years ago and that she just went into a new timeline. That she didn't leave. She just went into a worse reality. And she's so confused how she's in this reality, what's going on in this reality, and all that stuff. It's like, that's what I've been saying. A lot of these people, they don't know what the fuck is going on. They have no fucking clue. They haven't gone in and studied spirituality. They don't have any background. They don't have any reference. They just all of a sudden woke up and thought, hey, you know, if they started hearing guidance or whatever, and they just wanted to market it. And they didn't. There's so many people that went straight from awakening to teacher. It's like, you've got to be a learner. <clears throat> when I'm saying that stuff to people, I'm not trying to be rude. <clears throat> I mean, especially, you know, when people are coming in and questioning me, you know, well, where do you get that? Well, why do you think that? Well, that's not true. It's like, oh, no, just, you know, don't, don't come in and start fucking talking to me like that. Uh, especially when you don't even know, you, you haven't gone and done research. You haven't looked into anything. Like there's, I'm not just making shit up. So you've got to go out and you've got to be a learner. You've got to go learn some stuff. You got to go on a fucking destination. I've been fucking doing it for 45 years out there trying to learn about, you know, life. What, I'm, what, I'm, what am I and what am I doing here? And what is this place all about? And so that has been a, my life's journey. And so these other people, it just became a trend. They just became trendy. They wanted to be the trend, you know, so they wanted to be... I don't, I don't know. It's very three dimensional is all I can say. And so, um, but she, so she's so confused is how she is alive in this reality when she's expecting to be in a different one, which I don't know what the other one, I mean, back in 2020 when things went and she started maybe waking up. And so then she thought that life was going to go in a certain direction um, but now she thinks, well, I must have died and I entered the wrong reality. Because there's a lot of people who think they died. Uh, a lot of people have had near-death experiences. And like, you know, I've said, when I went in the hospital, mine was 09. And when I went into the hospital, to me, I should have died. You know, I mean, my injury is something that kills people. So I should have died. And even when I got out of the hospital for a long time, for years, I felt like I did die. I thought I died in the hospital and I'm just stuck in some weird reality. And um, like I'm confused, like I, I, I don't want to acknowledge my death. So I'm just staying, keeping myself alive as a ghost or something. I'm creating this other reality. And so I felt like that for a few years. 
I mean, there was one time where I was even sitting in my car crying about it. Like, it was real. It was really real. I was so confused <clears throat> because I was so off from reality. Time, people, everything had shifted. I wasn't the same person. Same person. Like, the Kelly that went into the hospital died in that hospital. That Kelly Denver came out of the hospital. Uh, you know, it was a different one, which that has fucked with my head too, where people will talk about walk-ins and stuff. And when you have a walk-in, you don't, they don't even know. And it was like, and uh, there was so many periods of time in my life where I was begging to get out of the game, whining and crying about how hard it was and life's so hard. And why are people like this? And why are people so mean and stuff? <clears throat> and uh, so, you know, that fucked with my head a lot. And I was like, man, maybe I died. Maybe I'm a walk-in now. Maybe I, you know, so I'll start trying to think of my past and I'll start trying to think of who I was. And then I'll be like, no, it's still me. It's still me. I still like, uh, you know, but there is a part that is destabilizing as well. When you start, <coughs> hold on. Man, it's like getting shot in the throat with a nail gun or something. And my lips are so chapped. And there's other weird things too with the uh, time. Like, like last night, my phone was fully charged, so I just laid it down and had it on do not disturb, and um, just left it laying there. And normally, everywhere you know, when I'm out traveling and stuff, especially when I'm around people. I won't be on my phone all the time, and so it'll just sit somewhere. It'll sit sometimes on a on a, a nightstand. Sometimes it'll sit in my purse. Depends on the situation, but it will sit in there for days and barely lose. Like I could have no charge for days and days when I'm not using my phone. And so this morning when I and normally I'll get up and it'll still be fully charged. Confirmation. It'll still be fully charged, but this morning, it, and this was hours ago, it was like one o'clock. It was like the first time when I got woke up. Like I woke, got woke up a few times, but it was very weird. I was like, I was still in a dream. But then um, when I woke up and I started like trying to bake the fire and stuff again and uh, looked at my phone, it was down to, it was um, I mean, like 13, it was in the red. It was like 13%. I was like, what? What in the fuck happened? Like, how in the hell did that happen? <clears throat> Just like the same as how it will go through a 10 hour fucking tune thing. And it will still be like, I've only been asleep like six hours. Like there's weird things that just don't make any sense. Time is like not, it, it's weird. It's just weird. <clears throat> so <clears throat> anyways, with this um, girl, cause I've heard other people too talk about that they feel like they are certain that they died <clears throat> oh this is ridiculous <clears throat> man i'm gonna be sick i am oh, been sick for a long fucking time i'm gonna be so glad when this sickness ends oh yeah and this was another video i saw yesterday too i didn't even listen to the whole thing i couldn't because it's already bad enough i've got the mercury in my teeth but when i start seeing the ones explain about the tattoos it's like that definitely the tattoos will be gone when go into a med bed. It, they're way too toxic. They will come out of us. There's no way they're going to be on us because um, there's all sorts of shit. There's like mercury and shit in the ink and stuff. It's so toxic. And I, and I put all that ink in people too. And even when you try and get like the best ink and stuff, or so, you know, everything is there to make us sick and kill us. So uh, anyways... I'm sure that the tattoos are all going to go off. And I just saw this was a really cool one too. And I'm going to see about getting an appointment at this. And it's in Connor, Washington, I think. It was what they said. But it, somebody developed this. Um, it's like this big bed thing. And it has these different things going over it. And then it does this movement. So it's all based on a frequency. And so it starts swirling you around with all this frequency. And it's the most high-tech uh, healing one. Well, I mean, the the medical, the military med beds are our most high-tech. 
but we got to get through some bullshit in order to get to those. But so I did want to go try this one out. It looks like really cool. And, um, it heals. <coughs> Fuck, man. God damn. <coughs> Hold on. Fuck. Oh, it is. A fucking, it really hurts. So, ah, fuck. See, that could be like Archangel Michael shooting arrows into my throat to make me shut up. Because it's only certain information allowed into the matrix. And the matrix of the mind is the control mechanism where people allow themselves to be controlled by something else. And programmed. It's runs, you run programs. You're just running programs. <coughs> But it's like a machine. It's like they, they keep a machine. That's weird. Because like in the Matrix. How they had all those people plugged in. And they kept something else running. Like a generator. That's what it is like. We're like a generator that keeps us running. All this other stuff. So anyways. But it's a mind trap. Like you got to break free. And, um, and once you break free. You know. But it's still. It, it keeps a hold of you. Keeps trying to pull you back and hold on to you in all different ways. And that's why you got this like, nope, nope, nope. Don't need that. Don't need that. Keep pushing it off of you, pushing it off of you. And so this, um, <coughs> these other people who all think like that they died and that they're in the wrong timeline or something. But how, how does that make sense? For one thing. Because you have these same people who are the ones telling you that you've got to put yourself in the timeline you want to be. These are the same people who tell you you can jump timelines. You can, like, I, I could leave this and just jump ahead and be with my partner and go out and save the world with them. You know, I could already be doing that. I just jump ahead and leave all this space behind. That's the kind of stuff that they tell you. But to me, in the universe, is that you're on the ride. You're supposed to have all these experiences. It's a part of your destiny. It's a part of what you're here to learn. And so you need to go through all the experiences. It's how you grow. It's how you expand. It's how you evolve. And so skipping experiences doesn't make any sense to me, especially, you know, tapping out when things are hard. It's the hardest stuff. It's the biggest lessons. You learn the most from the hardest stuff. You get your gifts from going through the challenges. And that's when you end up having all of the tools to have a better life. So you want to go through your challenges. You don't want to skip them. They're what helps you grow. So I don't understand, you know, uh, and how these people feel also trapped. It's like, well, you know, if you study in the reincarnation and stuff, then when you leave the destiny, you have a, or you're, when you leave the, the reality, you have a, a, a um, what is that called? <coughs> you have the, the replay thing, <coughs> the review. So you leave the experience, you have to go into the review. So these people wouldn't have really left the experience and gone into another one. And then without even knowing it. But there's also these things that I have noticed that occur, like I had said, when I had left from victim mentality and moved into empowerment, it is like you, it feels like you walk through a door. You literally feel like you walk into a different energy. And so it makes me feel like some of these, like I have said for a long time, some of these super spirits, that show is going to blow up, but it's a part of what they're here to learn. Uh, so things are going to blow up for them, but I was like, it could be that they, you know, that they thought that they were on one track. And so they thought, you know, that they were on one track. And then when that track ended and they saw that they were on a different one, that they became confused. But at this, 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 uh, this, the universe has all your answers. Like, how are these people 
these super spirits, why are they not tapping into their spirit guides, their guidance, and asking them what's going on? Because they were, they tell me, every, I mean, I can't say they tell you everything. They don't tell you everything. Because th some things you need to experience, some things you need to learn, some things you need to go into them not understanding. Because it's a part of the challenge. I just saw that. Oh, I was like, what do I have on today? <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Um, and, and, and right now, lately, especially while it's so cold, I have this, just repeat. I have my favorite flannel pajama pants and then my favorite warm shirts. And then some of these tank tops I really like. I was like, this morning when I kept this one on, um, from my, I may have had it on in a couple of days. Now I may put it back. I like take a shower and put it back on because it's like this really tight tank top. And so it's like, you don't have to wear a bra or anything like that. It just feels like, uh, like it's still holding all of you. And uh, so then, um, uh, when I went this morning when I was like, I think I'm just going to keep that on. And, uh, I was like, Oh, it's like the magic underwear, the, the Mormons in their magic underwear. It's in my magic underwear. So anyways, maybe boring. Nobody needs to know that. But anyways, that's, I'll share, I share a lot of stuff. <laughs> I've got nothing to hide. And, uh, you know, I think that's one thing too. I think so many people have stuff to hide. It's like, you, you can't hide stuff. That's something I learned a long, 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 long time ago. I was a kid when I learned that lesson. Uh, there's nothing you can hide. It always catch up with you. Everything is always exposed. It's, you know, it's just, it's impossible. It's impossible to just think that you can keep a lie going forever. It, it's always exposed. And the universe will bring it sometimes in a very... Uh, uncomfortable awkward situations where you have to face yourself so I think there's gonna be a lot of that going on I think that's what's going on with a lot of people and I think it's very destabilizing and it's very confusing especially to people who think that they had all the answers especially if they were talking to these other beings that were <clears throat> monitoring like they're not going deep enough into deep enough into oh my gosh my butt is so sore sitting here and i'm sitting on a big folded blanket and stuff too um and i swear i've got to get out of this flesh and blood you're not flesh and blood you're not flesh and blood you don't feel that pain <laughs> i do that kind of stuff all the time um so if it is um the the destabilizing <sighs> where the people have to uh, see that. I don't know if if their communication, especially when I heard that guy say that, that the, these people who are talking to the angels, because I thought it was weird how these people, they try and make their sh shit more valid. Like they try and name drop, seriously. Just notice, I mean, there's even tarot readers who do it all the time. They're always trying to name drop of who they're talking to. And so anyways... 1990s, that's 24 years ago. Well, we're going into 24 now, so it's like 25 years ago that this guy was saying that. And he was saying, so 25 years ago, that the shift had already begun. Because he said the shift's already begun. He said it started like 10 years ago. And this was in 1996. And this stuff is in CIA files. Like, There's a lot of stuff, I think, if you are just like super confused, and you know, I sound like a whack, and you just like you, you just don't know what the fuck's going on. You try and find the CIA disclosure files. They had to release all these files, and uh, it's got so much information. And I think that can help people put pieces together. There's so much information out there. It's like you gotta follow your desires because it will lead you into knowing. You're never gonna believe something just because someone tells you. You gotta go out and do the work. You gotta research it. You gotta look into it for yourself. And then you see how the pathway leads, how the lines all come to the place. You you see how it all goes together. But you gotta see it for yourself. That's why, you know, I'm not trying to be rude when I say go research. If you really don't understand this, you don't understand that, go look into stuff. The, the, the universe will show you. You will see it for yourself. You don't have to try and 
to tell somebody else that they don't know what they believe because you don't see it. You don't understand it. <clears throat> That's your lack of understanding. And people want to pull you back to their lack of understanding. It's like, no, you're not pulling me back. And uh, so anyways, uh, but there's all these people who are really confused. And that is also a sign to me that there's about to be this flipping and that is going to be really destabilizing, like on a whole nother level for so many people. Because, you know, I mean, there's so many people who keep on saying, you know, that this is the end and that all this bad stuff's going to happen. Uh, there's, I mean, there's some people who are big content creators and they are going all in on Trump. They're going all in on the money thing. They're going all in on all sorts of shit where it's just like, oh my God, where do you come up with this stuff? Where, what is your source? Where are you, how is it you think? Like, but, um, <clears throat> what I know is that it's like, everybody's like locking in on how their views so that when the things shift and it comes back on them, that that's the first thing they see because they need, to, there's something that it, it's linked together somehow. And so there's a lot of people who, you know, talk smack on Trump and stuff like that, but it's all based so much on biases. And I would used to be like the same, you know, uh, about him and his daughter. And I used to think like, oh my God, this guy's such a perv. And I, I, I've shared all sorts of mean stuff too, back in 2019 or 2020 when I was on Twitter. And, um, but then it was when all of a sudden I saw I, in 2020, when the news, how that they were manipulating what he was saying, how he was not saying the same things. Then I started having people come into my, <clears throat> into my orbit that was bringing information, different information about him. And so I started seeing a bigger picture. And that is when I, you know, felt guilt. I felt bad. I felt judgmental. I felt hateful. And so I did that apology. It was just some simple fucking apology on it. He had posted something and it was just something like, you know, I apologize for my hatefulness towards him and thanked him for what he was doing or something like that. Real simple. You only get like four lines and, um, the same thing on TikTok on your, um, your comments. So your tweets are like the same thing, like a, just a little comment thing. And so it wasn't like huge, but it went so fucking fast. It was going viral so fast. I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> it was going like every second. I was getting notification, notification, notification. It was like boom, 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 boom. And I was like, oh my God. Um, and that's when my count went down. That's when they were like, hell to the no. No, as soon as you see it, and you could go in and say mean things to him all day. You could threaten his life. You could say whatever the fuck you wanted to him. And he was, um, you know, he was our official, you know, guy in charge. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Then what I noticed is all these other politicians, all the ones that I started seeing what was going on, you go into their accounts and you say something. That's when you get the Secret Service showing up at your house. So it was like, whoa. Like the, the, the universe, the world, they've shown me a lot through this. So um, anyways... I think a lot of these super spirits and stuff are really being destabilized because their stuff isn't built on real, real connection to the universe. Like you got to really connect your soul to your, I don't know. It's like you, your higher self for one thing, your advanced self, you got to connect to that, which will make you feel like you're crazy because it is a completely different, it's a separation of realities this reality, this three-dimensional reality is very controlled, contained. And, you know, if you don't go along with what they say, then you don't fit in. You got to stay on that little edge of not fitting in. There's no reason to fit in. <clears throat> Why would you want to become something that isn't real? So you've got to stay connected to this other side of yourself, which I've been able to do my whole life. So I don't know. <clears throat> when you're just trying to figure it out now, but it's in there. 
you know, and I would say you keep doing it through communication, meditation, and, um, you know, connecting to yourself. But I have said, you know, there's a lot of interference. You have to use your discernment. You have dark energy that is feeding you. It's a parasitic energy that is feeding you so it can stay alive. So it will feed you negativity and it will feel good. You know, I mean, when you are sitting there telling you you're better than somebody else and stuff like that, people get all caught up into it. It's very intoxicating. And they'll think that this is coming from the, oh, the God Almighty. You know, they get themselves way up their own asses on this shit. So God Almighty is fucking telling them uh, personally. And then you have, apparently, the, the in these other realms, which I've said before, because that one time that really showed me was, um, it, like I said, it's like really busy around here all the time. Uh, with all these spirits and entities and stuff that are constantly going around in here. And um, the that one time when I was like, okay, I'm going to do a, a clearing. I'm going to sage the house. And the one that was in the hall, and I could see him just like he was like a man. I feel positive he was like a man in black. And he just laughed at me. And he could have been an astral traveler. <clears throat> I don't know, but um, I'm just saying that that is a ceremony that, you know, it, 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 it's just some ceremonies like you could think, you know, they work because you believe they work. So therefore you believe they work. So they work for you. But anyways, I was shown that that is an illusion. And so <clears throat> if you think about these other beings that are in these realms so that you, you have realms outside of you like the the next page over like we're on this page and this is our whole reality but the next page over can see our page and be aware of our page and tickle your fucking nose and so they can be aware of our page and interfere with our page because they don't want us to get into their page and so they can interfere in our page but you have to have an awareness that there's interference that there's other pages that are trying to interfere with your page. In, you know, if you think of the pages as realities and realms. And so these beings that are outside, like what he's saying, the ones that you call like uh, Archangel Michael, which is really, uh, I, I, I got to find the video because I, I, I can't believe I cannot think of what he, how he calls them. It's, it's not the Galactic Federation. It's like, the same thing as like when you say <clears throat> like a military will send out a group um, like on the giant story, the giants in Afghanistan in the mountains and they sent out that patrol. That's what uh, patrol And So Archangel Michael, what they call Archangel Michael is really this Mikhail patrol. And so it's, um, and it's like several, it's not individual, it's not like one being, it's like a, an energy. It's like an, a patrolling energy. And so, you know, so people are just going and just talking like right outside of themselves, kind of. But then they are believing it, whatever they're told. And then the whole name dropping thing. The whole thing of like, well, he says he's Archangel Michael, so, you know, I've got the big guy on the phone up in here. And even David Wilcock has been doing that. He's been <clears throat> really making a big thing about that he is channeling Archangel, Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's crazy too, because that seems like it would be a video that David Wilcock would have seen this one from 1996 this lecture that this guy's doing but i don't i don't know maybe it was so it, david wilcock was so busy for so many years lecturing being the teacher <clears throat> that he had moved out of learner and was in teacher and maybe he needs to go back to learner for a while because he missed out on stuff while he was doing teaching and so there's information that he needs to add into his reference in order to give him a more full view of things. I don't, I don't know. I think, you know, he's kind of showing that, but I think a lot of the big spiritual lead-ins are showing different 
things, but I think it also is shows us on another level is to not be dependent on other people's information and other people's knowledge and to create our own. <clears throat> but just be aware of when you are out there and you're trying to channel and stuff like that, that there is interference. There is beings that are there to put you off from the truth. The truth you will always find. The truth of the light is about love. It's about unity. It's about trust. It's about harmony. It's about, you know, trust fall in, you know, and, and not being all like, uh, you know, the universe shares this with me. So I'm going to charge you money so I can have a nice house. Like there's people out there because I had seen this complaint fucking a year ago at least. Of some people talking about these spiritual guru people who are charging huge amounts of money to life coach people and then the rest of their content is all showing about them jet setting around and how cool they are and so they're just taking these other people's money who are struggling and just going out there patting themselves on the back all the time and seeing I don't want to get like that I don't want to be that kind of person <clears throat> I don't I don't like that energy I, I, to me it is there's a humbling you got to be humble you're only a small you're only a small speck of sand in a whole fucking beach you're not all you're not all of it you're not the whole thing you're only a part of it and so you know you can't live in separation and even even in this uh, space that I'm in of under having so much more understanding about things than other people I can't put myself above other people I have to see that my role is here to <clears throat> remind me. It's just, you know, a speck of the sand that is sparkling and sees something different and is sending that information out to the other sand. It's not because I'm a better piece of sand. We're all the same. We're all just, you know, pieces of sand, but we all can get information from each other, you know, and that brightens you up, it lightens you. And so, but just keep in mind when you're trying to channel and you're trying to speak with your guides and meditate and stuff, there's a lot of interference out there. And that don't turn around when something's being given to you for free to go try and mark it off of it. You know, the universe will give you back what it is. Like they'll pay you back for doing the work that they want you to do. <clears throat> and it may not be instantaneously. Like what these all these people want instantaneous gratification like I, you know it's it won't go like that even if i sat here and go well you know they haven't been giving me anything and i've been doing this for years and they're not giving me any signs back well they talk to you and they take give you signs all the time and but it may not be the sign you want but they also um have made sure i've been taken care of the whole time there's never, I never, I, I don't go without things. Well, right now I need butter. <laughs> I need butter and I need dog treats. And I don't have any money and I don't get paid for a week and a half, which is another thing that is tripping me out, is how I keep running out of things so far. And then it's like, oh, fuck, a week and a half until I get, like, how is this happening? And it could be just a natural thing. I'm just not used to extra people. I mean, there's two other mouths now in the house. And maybe I'm just getting more of my equilibrium on that. And it's not strange at all. And I'm just, you know, in that mindset of everything's so weird. It's so weird. Everything's weird, <laughs> you know. But it may not be weird at all. So, um, but, you know, I'm not going to stress out about it. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to starve to death. It's like, you know, I'll be fine. It's like, it, whatever happens, you got to keep reminding yourself, no, I'll be fine. Whatever it is, I'll be fine. It'll be fine. And, uh, yeah, it would be great if, you know, the universe, uh, you know, stuck a crown on your head and said, hey, look at this. We've got this person over here, you know, and we're giving them everything and stuff so that you could be recognized that, you know, everybody wants to be recognized for what they know. But then, you know, a lot of these people who are being recognized, it's going to blow up in their face. So a lot of people have been recognized. They've taken money from people. It's going to blow up in their face. But I feel like more of a protection under the umbrella of the universe of waiting for the right time. And then they will, you know, then they will do what they want to do, you know, with my content and all of that stuff. It, it will play out the way it's supposed to play out. It's out of my hands. And um, so... 
anyways, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a way of just coming into alignment with your life, with and coming into sync, and uh, to realize like that, that there's other communications going on out there, and also you could be picking up on other people's thoughts. You can be picking up on your neighbor's thoughts. You can be picking up on all sorts of things. You can be picking up on entities around you that are around you sending you thoughts. So you have to really use your discernment you don't just the first thing that pops in your mind oh there i got communication i'm gonna run around and tell everybody and uh you know you, you gotta um i don't know a lot of times I sit with it a lot you know i'm always sharing stuff i'm always telling stuff you know when it's way before i've ever seen any kind of um when like when i started talking about the fake sun like i had to just go with what i was seeing <clears throat> what I saw and what I felt and what I was noticing and oh my gosh and I've been doing it for so long I was laughed at I mean there's so many people now talking about the fake sun and they're still being laughed at so you can imagine when you know you're one of the first ones who were talking about it and people think you're completely whacked out and it's like no but now you know so many people are seeing and so many people are understanding <clears throat> but you know there's a lot of times where you see things and you realize things and you know nobody else does and you just look like a weirdo you got to be okay with that you got to be comfortable with you know people not seeing what you see and but then you also um but and i would always get confirmation stuff too like when i was talking about the water and i was saying there's a problem with that and um I don't even remember all the stuff I was saying. I just knew that there was a problem. They kept pointing it out and pointing it out. And then that documentary came out talking about it and what they were putting in it and stuff. Like I knew that there was gunk in it, but I didn't know how bad it was. And now even to know further that they are fucking putting liquefied fucking people on us too. It's like, God damn. And, I, and all these drugs that everybody's on goes in our water. <clears throat> they can't get all these drugs that people are on out of the water. So we're all getting small bits of all these people's drugs and shit. Like, there's so much stuff. Like, it's bad. And, um, you know, but that's contained, controlled water. You can't contain and control nature. It's going to turn toxic. It's not going to work. And that these people who are trying to be the same as the universe or whatever. They're in competition with God, but God is not just an individual it's and they're all trying to be like scientists and stuff trying to become gods like they are it's like they're all trying to compete with god or something but everything they do isn't natural it's it's artificial and so it all turns negative it all falls apart the na natural order has an order <clears throat> <clears throat> But it has a rebirth. So it has cycles and rebirth. And that's what we're in right now. We're in a cycle of rebirth. And so we're in the cycle of ending. So it's like the winter. And this is like a dark winter. It is the end. This is the storms that take out this reality. And so it is a dark winter that we are in. But then we are going into the rebirth. And that is where we're really headed is for the rebirth but there has to be the end for the birth, rebirth but we're in this birthing process it's like the uh the collective is in labor we're laboring into giving birth to a new reality and so it's very intense you know we're I, it's like we're in the the transition part the part where you know we're about to start pushing and I feel like that there is. I feel like that we are pushing. I feel like that there's a lot of us who are pushing hard. We're in this now and we're pushing hard and we're really giving it that all to give birth to this new reality. And I think that there's many of us in all different ways. We're all doing that. Like we're pushing hard on this energy now. And this is the birthing of the new reality, but it's also what shatters the old one. And the old one has got so much control over, you know, the firmament. Like we wouldn't, nobody'd be scared of it if we were told. Nobody'd be scared of giants if we were told. Nobody'd be scared of this shit if they knew. But they were also controlled and contained. And so it's like a whole new world is opening up to them and they're all scared and, 
you know, you're going to go out and knock on the door of a giant. And, you know, are you really in there? It's like, dude, on, damn. <laughs> wacky shit. It's like wacky shit. And so these, these people are the ones who are going to find themselves in a cage in another planet in somebody's birdcage. Some giant sitting there, you know, throwing things at them and dance, little monkey dance. So anyways, it's just wacky. People just don't get it. <laughs> just don't get it. And um, there's, there's just so much. There's so much to this uh, reality and stuff. But anyways, you got to get in tune with your spirit, with that spiritual side of life. And that is so much about trust and destiny. So go, you know, go towards those kind of like, you know, what do I see playing out in my life? <clears throat> How are things going in my life? And <clears throat> where, where do I feel I'm headed? What, what, are, what am I supposed to be doing? And how am I supposed to get there? And then being present, you know, not getting mad. Well, I don't want to see them. They, they didn't trigger me. There's so much of that stuff going on. People are just ignoring their triggers. It's like, dang, people. The triggers are here to prepare you. They're here to help you get in alignment for the ascension. You need the triggers. You don't need, you, you know, and then you have these super spirits telling you to ignore the triggers. Run, run from the triggers. Oh, you're a bad person. You're low vibration. Run, run. It's like, no, you need to run to your triggers. You need to go into your triggers and you need to process through them because that is that is the removing this dark energy off of you from this reality. The triggers are there to do that. And so, yeah, it's wacky. And, I, and then I can see like how that would be this, this controlling, this controlling um, patrol of this energy that is there to keep you in that other state of mind because that's where they want to keep you is uh, you know as a part of the generator as a part of the energy that is just mindlessly going about not you know not really thinking outside the box not really thinking for yourself just being a product of your environment and that is the that's the con the the creation of the matrix is this uh, not thinking for yourself, just being on autopilot. That's low chakra. That's in the unhealed chakra. And so, anyways, I've been talking and talking and talking for, uh, hopefully I'm making sense. It totally makes sense to me. <laughs> so hopefully I'm making sense to you guys. And yeah, I think you're um, so bright, Crystal, and I appreciate that is because uh, that's how I do see everybody who does listen to me is like, you know, it's like the everything I'm seeing it is you guys are the ones putting it into action. And so you guys are making the changes. You're creating a ripple effect. And so it's it's very exciting because we are we are giving birth to something new. And but you got to keep in mind that there is a whole bunch of people who are not going there with us. A whole bunch of people. It's not everybody's going so when you hear these people who only see, like there's um, another spiritual girl and she said that she doesn't see anything. She said no matter how much she looks ahead, she can't see past February 2024. And, um, you know, and I don't know if they're hiding something from her because she's not supposed to know yet or if that's because she's leaving this reality in that time and she's going to a different one. And, and then just keep in mind that in order to really leave the reality, you go to a life review. You don't just, you know, go into another uh, reality without going through what you did. Like, like I don't know. That would be the first I've ever heard of it. That you, instead of dying, that you just wake up in a different reality and wake up in a different reality. Although this is happening for other people too. I've heard people saying that they can completely remember a different life and now they're in this one. But to me, it can also just be, I don't know. Like, I I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I would just be guessing. You know, I can put that out and ask them to explain it more to me and see what I get back from it. But from my understanding, that you would, in order to leave one reality, you will leave the game, you will exit 
somehow there will be something that will be your exit and you will leave and then you will go to your review and then that's when you decide what you're doing next. And so and it's all different. Not everybody just jumps back into another life, but there is some, you know, grandpa who passes and then he jumps right back in and comes back in as your dog, comes back in as your kid. Like this stuff happens all the time. And so um, you can jump right back in, but you are aware at some point that that's what you're doing. It's like new, new contracts are written. It's a new destination. You're on another endeavor. You're, you're, you've left one ride and you've gone on the next one. So I, I don't know how it's like, it's like these people are on the ride and they're saying that they're moving cars. They're just shifting cars in the ride and all of a sudden they're in a different position. It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I would say everything goes back to one's own mind and things can definitely fall apart, but the things that are falling apart aren't real. And so it's they're they're only as real as you make them. That's that's everything. So, anyways, we'll we'll get through that. And today's the twenty seventh. So, oh, and I did see it's um, J P Morgan and Barclays are now got big links to the island, the island boys. And so they've got big links over there to the island, and uh, you know that's a big part of, uh, you know, the one guy who's like some CEO or something, he's got 30 logged in visits over there on, uh, you know, I guess, uh, Jeffrey's own plane. And so I, I don't know if they're going through all these flight logs or whatever the fuck's going on. But anyways, that, so the, the bank things keep being exposed, exposed, exposed. They're all going to be crash, crash, crash. And we can only hope that today's the 27th and this, this debt calculator thing was really, um, timing them out and it was the end of their bullshit so that we can fucking finally be free from their tyranny of um enslavement by the dollar dollar bill y'all so anyways time is up for them no matter how it keeps going just keep that in mind and keep in mind when you're hearing all these different people saying things and it messes with your head you've got to go inside you'll find your truth inside if you're leaving this reality or you're headed for the age of Aquarius or you're going to keep playing out this, um, the old earth reality, you know, everybody has their destination is inside you. It's all in your flight plan. It's, it's inside you. So you find your truth inside you. You always find your truth inside you and I'll talk to you later.